contract. Congratulations. Now it's time to start packing and hiring a mover. So I have worked literally with Stephen Price for the last couple decades. He is with Glenn Ellen Mayflower. So I've invited him to talk with us about some moving strategies to get ready. And I have found his, his pricing to be competitive, his bids to be accurate and not a bait and switch, which you get with some moving companies. So that's why we've um, literally worked with him for years. So thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us when somebody's at this stage and they want to get ready, um, what is it like when they do their initial consultation? Well, what I would advise is that uh, the customer walks through their own home with their significant other and decides what they're going to move. They can walk through room by room and just decide they might be downsizing, for example. So what furniture are they going to take with them? And while they're doing that, also look in closets and cabinets and decide what are we going to move from here? Are we going to get rid of some of this? And then who's going to do the packing of boxes? Because there's a lot of things that need to be packed, whether it's artwork, TVs, china that may be high value. Customers usually aren't comfortable packing lamps, for example. So I ask them to do that before we come out to the home so when we're doing the walkthrough, we're making the most of our time together. And they've made some of those decisions. Uh, and then I will list everything they're moving. Uh, they may be doing some of the packing, but we're happy to do all the packing for them. So we can always do that. We can even give them a partial packing price and a full pack so they can make some decisions. And we can always adjust. We're going to give them a binding estimate for the move. Uh, but I think it all starts with uh, them knowing what they're going to move so that we can give them a list on what their needs are and really give them a consultation on what they need us to help them with. That does give you a good idea of what's going to be going on in the process mm -hmm. too, so they, they have everybody on the same page. Absolutely. So I offer staging consultation and accessories and things for my clients. So a lot of a lot of what we do for pre-marketing is getting things decluttered and out of here. Do you have any solutions for that? Absolutely. We have over 200. Uh, we call them Go Mini containers. They're 16 feet long. They have a roll-up garage door. Uh, we even rent pads and straps if the customer chooses to use them themselves, like to load the container, or we can supply labor for them to load the container. So it's really up to them on how they want to handle the decluttering, uh, but we have options available to help them out with that. And I understand you also have a DIY kind of pod situation where you could put that in the driveway and they could have their friends help them. Correct. Move. If they're if they're using it to declutter, uh, again, we can bring out the container, put it in their driveway uh, with pads and straps, pads so they can protect any furniture they put in there. And then they can load it. They can tell us when it's done. We'll send a truck out to pick it up. They just need to put a padlock on it. We'll bring it back to our warehouse and store it until they're ready for the container. Is there a different solution if you're doing an out-of-state move? Not. Uh, we don't have a do-it-yourself option for the out-of-state move. Part of it is the liability. Uh, and I find that if you're doing a move yourself, and I've helped people look at the numbers as part of a consultation, that when they're doing the move themselves, uh, the only savings is the labor. And mm -hmm. what they do lose is liability or responsibility. And then you also lose on an interstate side who's supplying the pads and the straps, kind of the things you need to get the move done. Um, but if, if that is a better fit for someone, I'm happy to you know discuss it with them and they can go off and I'll say plan their own do-it-yourself option. But I think when most people really look at the, uh, the savings and the savings only is the labor, their labor, um, that it, it, the mover, the professional full service mover becomes more appealing. Yeah, and a recent client who's going to be going from here to California was originally thinking that while they're staying in an Airbnb that their stuff while they're looking to buy something would be stored in California. Well, actually, you suggested that the stuff be stored here and then when they're ready, you can take it out there. We can usually control the pricing more if we store it here at Origin. Uh, so as long as they give us notice and if they're, if they're buying a property, they're going to have 30 or 45 days notice. So they can go ahead and just say, look, we put an offer on a house. It closes uh, June 15th and we can plan it loading on a truck, you know, around June 10th, for example, or 12th uh, so that it's out there and it starts the delivery window when they close on the new home. Mm -hmm. So do you have any hacks in getting ready for our moving day? I know when we were moving, you gave us some strategies of like, when you're going down the stairs, take a load, don't go empty handed, and, and things like that. And in the, so there's kind of two types of moves to think about. There's the local move that's hourly. So yes, if you're making a trip upstairs, bring things to the main floor. 
because uh, it saves time, and time is money if you're moving, say, Northbrook to Northbrook or Northbrook Brook to Glenview. If you're moving out of state, it's based on the weight. So I advise people, be organized. You don't have to do some of those little trips for the mover because it's just based on the weight of the shipment. But if you have things in, you know, homes, if you have things in 15 different areas, but they're not all going, make it clear for the movers which things are going with them and which things aren't going on the truck. So when the movers come in, they'll protect the home, they'll protect the furniture, but they won't load anything in error, but they also won't leave anything behind on accident. Nice. Something like a bird bath in the backyard or a plant stand or any mm -hmm. of those things that may be out of sight, out of mind on move day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've walked into walkthroughs where they, it just looked like it fit there, so it stays, but then the buyer's like, I don't want that. Get it's amazing the number of times you'll have people discover the cookie sheets or the broiler pans yes. or things in the in the stove because they've packed the whole kitchen and now the truck is ready to leave and they're running out with arm fills of stuff like oh we forgot this whether it was a closet crawl space attic whatever so i always say do that well before the move so it's less stressful on move day for sure so any other things you wanted to share with us well what i would suggest is while i t I, I suggest that people walk through their home uh, before the mover shows up and again with their significant others so that they're on the same page so that they make the most of their their initial walkthrough uh, before they ever have us come out and before they start shopping for a mover if they're moving interstate they can go on the department of transportation's website which is protectmymove.gov and they can look up some of the criteria of choosing a mover and there's always uh, simple suggestions like don't choose a mover that wants a deposit because mm. my summer is usually filled with people calling saying I gave someone a deposit and they didn't show up. But those are usually a move broker who maybe didn't have their own truck uh, and for whatever reasons didn't show up and they lost their deposit. Wow. And then the news has stories like that occasionally. For a local move, they can go to the Illinois Commerce Commission. The Illinois Commerce Commission regulates all movers in the state of Illinois and they have a, a guide for choosing or selecting a mover. And I think once you understand the playing field with the mover, then choose a, an established mover, uh, arguably with good reviews. You can also vet uh, the, uh, the mover's safety ratings with both of those services. For example, the Department of Transportation offers uh, how many complaints were filed with a mover, how many trucks they have. So you can get a kind of feel for them as a business and that they're a brick and mortar established business. And then sure, look at Google reviews or use referrals from previous customers just to make sure that you're not missing anything. And then talk to your move consultant. Make sure that everything you understand is going to happen on move day. Also, once you have the estimate and the inventory, because we supply each customer with an inventory that goes room by room and shows what we understood we were moving. Mm -hmm. So look at the estimate, look at the inventory, then make a list of questions. And before you sign it, review them, dot the I's, cross the T's, so to speak, and make sure that everything you understand that's going to happen and everything you need moved is included in the estimate and then all the services like packing and full value protection are included in the estimate so there's no surprises mm -hmm. well your company is also very great with communication they call a couple days ahead mm -hmm. to make sure and then they're there on the day that you can call the office and ask questions then too so i've always been very pleased so, so. thank you each customer uh, not only has my phone number but they have the number of their move coordinator so we're not um say a large corporation from the point of view that we have an automated phone system and they don't actually speak to a person or a different person each time they have an individual move coordinator they're dealing with throughout the process mm -hmm. great thanks so much oh you're welcome thank you always a pleasure